Hi, I'm Yipak from Minigame Guides, and in this video, I just want to give you a good foundation to start Hell's Architect with. Now, it doesn't really throw you any curveballs at any point, but if you really know some basic things, uh, you know, really give a good foundation for your base, you will never have any problems, no matter how many sinners you have or at which part of the game you are, if you are early game or late game. If that sounds good, let's get started. Okay, so let's just start off first with the resources. Now, basically, when I explain all the resources, you will know a lot about the game already. So, first of all, we have the metal, the dirt, and the coal. Now, the, these are the three prime resources that you will get by digging. So, you can find all these things in the dirt. So, for example, over here, we actually have some dirt. So, if you dig this up, we get seven pieces of dirt. If you dig this up, you get 10 pieces of coal. And this great thing are the four pieces of metal. Um, metal and coal are basically just the things that you will need to build specific um, buildings. Um, there are just basic buildings, like for example, the ladder will need some dirt, or you can just build, for example, over here a meat farm with some dirt, some coal, and some metal. It doesn't really get more difficult than that. Now, dirt plays a little bit more. Now, let's talk about a few of the other resources. Now, we have the blue crystals. Now, blue crystals. Um, you can find these just basically all over the map. So these are the blue crystals. And you can only mine these whenever you actually have the crystal refinery upgraded to level 2. And as it says, it's an essential resource needed to summon devils to help in a given circle of hell. Warning, extremely rare, use carefully. Now, basically, the green, uh, the blue crystals are important for the prolonging of artifacts or summoning devils. Um, honestly, it's not as important. It's something that you can use. You can play around with. For example, the devils, they're going to be buffing your uh, workers. They're going to help you mine faster, produce faster, move faster. And you can just easily summon them through the summoning portal over here. Besides that, we also have suffering. Suffering is going to be one of the primary resources that you're going to be crafting. Now, of course, it's Hell's Architect, so suffering is, plays a big part of it. Now, how do you get suffering? That's basically these torture machines. Now, I have over here the Iron Maidens, the Bat of Kings, the Furnace. Over here, we have the Loud Music. We have the Rack and the Freezer. And there are tons of more. If you go into the Build menu and you go to Tortures, you actually have quite a lot of things to go over. Um, we have Onion Slicing, Pillory, Fur Play, whatever that may be. Spider Box and stuff like that. Um, basically, this is the best way to get some suffering. Now, there are additional ways, and I will talk about that in a second. The biggest important thing that you will need to know about the torture machines is there are specific types. If you go to the build menu and you hover over one, it says blood. This one says fire, blood, fire. And if you go down, then you actually have more like none. So this is our very general. Now we have electricity, we have claustrophobia and stuff like that. Cold. Um, those things really play a big factor because if you look at the population tab and you choose just any sinner, for example, over here we have Adrian. Adrian has 150% um, fire. So actually, if you torture him with, for example, the furnace over here, then you will actually get 150% more suffering from him. So if you look at, uh, let's just look at this person over here. So we have Julius Caesar, one of our legends. Actually, if we look at his um, tortures, so in the torture machine, the Bat of Kings, upgraded to level two, gives a base amount of two suffering every cycle. But if because Julius Caesar is afraid of fire, and then it will actually give you an additional three suffering for each cycle, so a total of five. Those things is something you really need to pay attention to. It's gonna play a big impact. You now you can also increase the suffering and pretty much every production machine by just upgrading it but i only suggest upgrading it to level two level three requires essence and that's our next conversation piece now essence is basically one that you will get by right clicking on any kind of sinner and just sacrificing him to i don't know demons i guess so let's just pick a, uh, a random person so let's just say this person over here. Now, 
once we right click on him, we can decide how we're gonna kill him. So we can choose electrocution, impaling, infestation, incineration, or eye gouging. Just pick one, it doesn't really matter so far that I can tell. So he gets killed by some insects. Once he's dead, we get 11 essence, that's pretty bad. And over here we have a demon who's gonna kill the bugs and take him away. Now we get 11 essence to play around with. Now, depending on the sinner that you're sacrificing, um, the longer he's been with you, the higher his skills are, the more valuable he is to you actually, the more essence you will get. But because we killed him, we no longer have access to him for now. Now, now with the essence, we can actually start building specific buildings. So for example, you can create the summoning portal which requires essence or the gong or the large suffering collider default and stuff like that. So these are the more advanced buildings or you will also need it of course to upgrade your machines to a level three Then you need 50 essence. Now you may have been attached to the specific sinner that you just sacrificed, then you can use a building called the Limbo Gong. Now the Limbo Gong is pretty cool and this thing is that you can actually just, you know, get your um, sinners back. So these are the sinners that I sacrificed for essence and you know, or maybe they died because they hadn't access to any food or water, which we're going to be talking about in a second, but basically this is the these people are dead so they are out of our reach but we can bring them back just by buying them back with suffering so each time you buy one back this price is going to go up so if we for example bring back let's just say adela over here we're going to buy her back for 900 suffering which is quite a bit now the price has go up to 1000 so each time you use it it raises with 100 suffering which is honestly quite a lot and kind of limits the entire use of the system and now you can see over here we actually have our sinner back now let's talk about the next uh, resource we have over here the green crystals now green crystals are basically these crystals that you can dig up when you actually have created it or built your crystal refinery at level one so this is the first thing you get access to once you mine these things up you actually also get to use the research stones. Now the research stones is one of those buildings you're gonna have to build out of the special menu and you can start unlocking specific stations. So for example, you can, uh, you start off with Iron Maiden, but you can, for example, choose to buy the rack for 15 um, green crystals and then you can start t torturing people with that. Or you can get some decorative ladders or the spike ladder um, the, you can also upgrade your food production to better um, things. Now, if you actually go to the build menu and you tap on, for example, food, over here you see three categories. We have production, manufacture, and provide. So we have a flesh farm who is going to turn dirt into food. Then we have the cauldron who is actually going to you know, transform that meat into you know, food that the people can eat. And the trog is basically the way that they are going to eat it. This is basically, you know, where they're going to stand and eat. Now, this is um, something that you always need to kind of, you know, keep in mind. So at the start, you would probably need just like three flash farms for like, I don't know, nine people, for example, and one cauldron and like one or two trogs. Now, as you get more sinners, you will just need to expand the flash farms and only like two cauldrons and four, four uh, two or three trucks. They will always eat in shifts. If the truck is right now um, being used by two people, then they will wait until those two people are gone and then they will eat. When the line becomes a problem, or for example, look at this person over here, there is a problem then they will get, uh, you know, the sanity will go down and there will be a good chance that they're going to be dead in seconds. Now, for that reason, it's really important to, you know, kind of always keep up with the demand of your sinners. Now, the same thing works actually for the drinks. So if we go to dirty water, you start off with a simple treat, a water squeezer and a metal bucket. So production manufacturer provide. Why do you ever want to upgrade this in Hell's Architect? Well, there's a very simple reason. To the research tree, you can actually unlock the next category. So for example, the uh, let's go to, for example, the caller in the field kitchen, the kitchen and the chef's kitchen. Why would you upgrade this? 
the more content they are with their food and with their drinks and their beds, their resting parts, the more happy they will be, the better they will function, they will move faster, they will suffer more, they will just be better little worker bees. For that reason, it's always a good idea to upgrade this. But it's not necessary, you can always work with the bare minimum, but it's basically the only thing that you can do after the foundation for your base has been set. And that's basically upgrading, upgrading and upgrading. So for the base necessities, all you need to do is get some meat farms going with some cauldrons and torques, get some latrines going with a water squeezer and a water bucket, and of course some paper boxes. I've already upgraded to beds, but you don't need, for example, I have 20 sinners, you don't need 10, uh, you don't need 20 beds. I think 10 beds are already way too many, but you know, work for the future. Um, and that is basically it. Now there are a few additional tips I do want to share. Now in the research tree, um, I was mentioning a specific ladder. So we have the ladder, decorative ladder and the spike ladder. The ladder and decorative ladder, they are just, you know, a way to move uh, vertically. But a spike ladder will actually also, uh, whenever the person uses it, whenever the sinner uses the spike ladder, it has a chance to give suffering. So if you see someone use uh, a ladder, so let's just say this person. You see, actually they give you a few suffering. So this is a little fun additional way to get some suffering uh, without using the torture machines. There is also, for example, the broken glass platform. So instead of making the floor fragments, just use a broken glass platform. And then you have the same effect, but whenever they move horizontally whenever you have removed, of course, all the dirt. Now, this is a tip for very, very late game. Um, once you have pretty much dug up everything, now you cannot go out of your frame, which kind of sucks. So you will just start using all the dirt that you have saved up. Now you need dirt to actually always have your farms working. If you don't have any dirt, your farms will not be working. You won't have any food, for example. Now for that, the Large Suffering Collider is perfect. Suffering, you will never run out of suffering. The, suf the torture machines work really great. And if you have quite a few sinners, I already have 20 and they already give me tons of suffering. Then you can just, you know, start stopping with digging. Actually digging becomes a lot less important at that time because you can just start using the Large Suffering Collider. What it just does is it's going to transform 20 suffering into 25 dirt. And you can upgrade it, of course, like any other machine, but it's rather expensive. But honestly, this is a massive game changer for me. Um, it really just reduces the need to dig, uh, except for coal and iron. But it will give your farms, you know, the materials they need very easily. I might actually build a few more in the near future as I upgrade the suffering even more. Another tip is the effect of light. Now, if you just tap on this little button over here, we have light. Now, light will create a specific aura around it. If you actually just tap on this chandelier, it should give you a tooltip and it will actually tell you that the people in the light source that are, you know, in covered by the light source, they will produce better, they will build better and they will just work better. But the light also has a bad effect for suffering machines. Now, suffering machines, they need to work in the dark. People need to be afraid or whatever. And, you know, the light is not a good thing for that. So um, if you actually place this really close to a suffering machine, that suffering machine will get a minus 20 for suffering. So you can use decorations in your production areas, but don't use them where your suffering machines are. Um, they don't really match that good. Next to that, we also have the legends. Now, I have three legends at this point. I have Nero, Julius Caesar, and Jack the Ripper. There's also Hitler, for example. Um, that I think there are eight of them in total. Um, you know, just be sure to collect them all because they all do something great. Now, how do you get legends? Because I have built the wall of legends. This allows uh, legends to appear instead of newcomer sinners. Now, if you look at the population tab, for example, Jack this Jack the Ripper, he will um, you know, increase the amount of suffering uh, to people that are being tortured in his 
aura. So for example, he's always in this furnace because he doesn't like fire. And you know, all the people in these range, they are gonna get, um, you know, they're gonna give us a lot more suffering. Nero and Julius Caesar also do um, a few things. For example, Julius Caesar is a really great one for essence because any random uh, selected synergy is marked by a political enemy. Finish them to gain 100% more essence, which is quite a lot. Um, as you know, you need to sacrifice people for essence. This is a great way to get some more than you normally would. But yeah, that is basically it. That's everything you need to know for you know completing the sandbox or the campaign or whatever you want to accomplish in Hell's Architect. I hope you found this guide useful. Leave a like if you did. And I want to thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.